Welcome back, everybody, and be prepared for one of the shortest videos. I know you're happy about that, that you're going to see. We're going to talk about decimal expansion as a geometric series. It's kind of a common little decimal trick that a lot of teachers like to share with students, sometimes even at the Algebra 2 level. Um, and I thought that it would be really great to share this with you. I'm not saying that something like this would necessarily appear on the AP exam, but hey, it's a great thing to study nonetheless. And it says the directions here are to write 1.025 where the 2.5 has a bar line over it as a geometric series and express its value as a fraction. And that's what's really cool about this. It's a way that you can really write any repeating decimal as a fraction. It doesn't matter how many decimals repeat, you can do it the same technique each time. So let's get started. First thing that you're going to do is you want to write a series for this. And I want to write this series in long form. In other words, S equal, and then just term by term, just throw this down on paper. Now the way that you're going to do that is kind of interesting. You're going to consider the first term to be 1.025 where the 2.5 repeats. Okay. Now if we continue doing this, what we then have to understand is that the next two digits would be 2.5, right? And Sometimes it kind of helps to line this up over off to the side, but this is what I'm talking about. The next two digits would be a 2-5, and the digits that would come before would all three be zeros, because remember what your teacher told you back in elementary school, you've got to line up your decimal point. So that makes the second term point zero 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 two five. Now the next term, we would put the 2, 5 in these two spots, and as you can probably tell, there would be five zeros that would come before. And by the time you get three terms, I'm guessing that we have a pretty good idea what's going on. Now, I'm going to get rid of that bar line because I don't need that there. Now I'm also going to do another little change because I do not have a geometric series here. That's really important to note. Because of this one in front of the decimal, I'm going to want to extract that. And I know that this is going to seem like some superfluous writing, but I want to do this in order to convey this point that I'm so struggling to make in that only part of this series is going to be geometric. Okay. It will be infinite, so we take note of that. Now, pull the one aside, like I said, and I want you to know that all of this is going to be geometric. That is a geo series. How do you know? Well, it's got a common ratio. And that's what we have to find out. We have to find out what that R value is going to be. And it's perhaps likely that your intuitive math knowledge can get you there. But if you have trouble, the best way to find an R is to take any random value inside the interior of the series and divide it by the term that comes just before it. Now, be very careful here because it's easy to lose track of how many zeros you have. But that's what's going on here. And if we move the decimal point in the numerator five digits to the right, we get 25. That means we got to move the decimal point in the denominator five digits to the right. And that would give us a 25, but we have to add two more zeros. And if 25 is divided by 2,500, you get 1 over 100. And that is your R. And might I point out, it is an R that is certainly less than 1 and greater than 0. So all systems go to find the sum. Now, here's where you have to again be tricky. This 1 is not considered your first term, not for the geometric series. I'm not saying 1 doesn't have a place. It does. We're going to put 1 in our summation expression here, our sum expression, but we're not going to use it as part of our formula. Our formula says 
start with the first number, 0 0.025, and then divide that by 1 minus what the r is. Now, this can make it things kind of interesting if this is a non-calculator problem. I would probably suggest, temporarily at least, using decimals. So 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. Now you might be able to think about converting this to a fraction at this point. Well, first let's subtract, let's make sure that we have this numerator correctly. First, let's subtract 1 minus 0 0.01 and that's going to give us 0 0.99. Meanwhile, you see this one real patient there. Next, we're going to move decimals again. This decimal moves three places to the right to give us a 25. This decimal moves three places to the right to give us 990 with a zero. And now, I suppose you could say the answer is 1 and 25 over 990. That would certainly meet the requirements of expressing this as a fraction. But if this is a multiple choice format and we have mixed fractions among the choices, you would simply need to take 990 times 1 and add 25, which just simply gives you 1015 over that 990. These are equivalent and they are both the fraction that would give you the 1.025 repeating. And if you're not sure, your homework assignment is to grab basically any calculator, type it in, and check it out. Anyway, hope you like this. We'll see you next time.